The next step in configuring our project is to add some alarms. And in fact, we've already done some of this. In most cases, alarms are created in the profile editor. Let's take a minute to jump back and see what's available there and add some alarms to our project. I've already opened up my custom airport meter profile. I know we've seen this before, but to review, I can click add edit to edit this profile. In this case, I'm going to edit existing and leave my profile selected. I'll leave my profile's name and variable tags the same and move on. I've selected all my tags, which is fine. This page is where I actually create the PC-based alarms. I have PC-based checked for all of my currents. In the project's database, because these are analog variable tags, the alarms will be created as analog alarms. This is important to remember because, as we'll see in the next video, analog alarms have their own set of unique parameters. In contrast, the breaker status tag is a digital tag. So I'll check this box to create a digital alarm, which has different parameters from an analog alarm. This is the only change I wanted to make here, so I'll go ahead and close the wizard. Back on the main page, there is one other alarm parameter I can change. Under the PC Based Alarm Tags tab, I can review my alarm selections. I can also change the alarm's category with this drop down menu. You'll recall that this was originally set in the Variable Tags here in Profile Editor, but this gives me the opportunity to override the defaults. In my case, I'll say this meter is monitoring a normally open breaker, so a closed alarm should have a medium priority in the alarm engine. Once finished making my changes, I'll save the profile. While I'm here, let's discuss onboard alarms, because these are handled a bit differently. To demonstrate, let me quickly create a profile based on the PM5350 standard. Inside the alarm server, a PC-based alarm tag will take a value from a variable tag, compare it to the alarm tag's configuration, and set the alarm state accordingly. An onboard alarm, in contrast, is calculated inside the device and is written to the device's internal event log. In this case, the alarm server doesn't make any calculations on its own, Instead, the I.O. server reads the device's event log. If there are any relevant alarms, the driver writes the alarm states and times to the alarm server directly. The big difference this makes in Profile Editor is there are no checkboxes to create onboard alarms. Rather, there are specially configured variable tags in a group called onboard alarm that are designed to read values from an event log and write them to the alarm server. We'll discuss these variable tags in more detail as we cover the different drivers. But for Modbus devices like this, the onboard alarms are generally only valid for factory device types and can't be created custom. I usually add all onboard alarms to my profiles. Because they're read from an event log, there is no additional communications load from adding more tags. This is all we can configure with alarms in Profile Editor. I'm going to export my profiles once again and update my devices using the IO Device Manager. In the next video, We'll see what these options do in the project databases. Until then, thank you.